Hello and a very, very warm welcome to my YouTube channel this evening. My name's Chris and we're taking a look at the railway line that ran from Brent down to Kingsbridge. But first, we're here at Rangerton to take a look at the uh, station that sprung up here in the uh, mid-1950s where the uh, trains used to stop on the, on, as they were on the main line and people from... Uh, passengers were then picked up by horse and coach at the uh, at the hotel here and then taken down to Kingsbridge by by horse and coach. Rangerton station actually opened in 1848 and uh, it was called Rangerton station at the time. In 1849 they changed the name to Kingsbridge Road Station so that passengers arriving would know that they were able to get a horse and coach link down to Kingsbridge. By 1895, it was back to Rangerton Station. Robert Fole founded the coach service that ran from Kingsbridge, starting off at the King's Arms Hotel, up to Rangerton Station. Now, he ran a coach service between 1848 and 1892, and by the time it got into 1880, he was running 36 coaches a week, meeting trains and passengers and parcels as newspapers to be taken down to Kingsbridge. Now, the King's Arms Hotel had opened previously in 1775, and Robert Fole also ran the horse and coach service from Kingsbridge out to Dartmouth to meet the trains that came from uh, that arrived at Kingsweir station and from there the passengers were taken by ferry across to the Dartmouth side to meet the coach service back to Kingsbridge. But at that time there was no train line connection from the main line to Kingsbridge so the horse and coaches would meet here to collect passengers from the uh, station down below just down this track at Rangerton. Now the Kingsbridge branch line opened in 1893 and this was at Brent station. We'll move across to Brent station and have a look around there first before we go on to Avonwick. It was the first station following departure from Brent on its way down to Kingsbridge. We're here in South Brent and as you can see the main line line is the main line is coming down here and just up there on the right hand side would have been the cutting which would uh, take the line down to Avonwick and on down to Kingsbridge eventually. And this is actually looking down on what would have been Brent Station. The only thing that remains is the goods shed just down there on the left hand side and just where that sign is on the side of the car park on the side of the track was the uh, signal box which was uh, sadly removed some years ago. It had been hoped to retain it as a point of historical interest but uh, network rail and so on decided in their infinite wisdom that um, it was too close to the mainline track. Very sadly, with that uh, rather lovely signal box gone, the only thing that remains at Brent is the good shed just over, over onto the, on the side of the car park. Now we're on our way to Avonwick station, which was actually built a short way from Avonwick village and at Bennick Knoll. And it was a very, very fine William Clark designed station as were all the others along the way. He was a renowned Victorian architect who designed many, many railway stations, particularly along this route from Brent to Kingsbridge. Even Wick Station, along with the complete line, opened in 1893 
and as it turned out the station was the quietest on the line and unfortunately it lost its good service on the 11th of june 1956 on the same date the station was downgraded to an unstaffed halt a loop line serving two small sidings one to cattle pens was lifted in december 1956 after closure in 1963 the station remained derelict until it was bought by the present owners, Bob and Beryl Gale, in 1970. The owners in the past have been a little bit troubled by trespassers, but are pleased to show people around the station to interested visitors. Now, while Bob and Beryl Gale have owned Avonwick Station since uh, 1970, in the early days they converted it, and principally they were offering a bed and breakfast service. Now, all their family have grown up here, and have very close ties with the station and it's lovely to see that it has been retained in some shape or form but do please uh, make an appointment before you call in I'm sure they'll always be happy to show you around now we're going to fly down the Avon Valley and here we are uh, coming up to Garra Bridge which is only a few short miles from Avonwick this, all, also, this station also opened in 1893 and um, was on the south side of the B3207, very close to uh, Curtis Knoll. Garrow Bridge Station was the principal intermediate station on the branch line, and it was the only station with a passing loop. Apart from the up platform and the loop, the station was very similar in design to the other intermediate stations. Now, another interesting innovation that the Great Western Railway brought in and it turned out that uh, Garrow Bridge Station was host to the GWR camping coaches between 1934 and 1939 for folk to come and enjoy a holiday. The camping coach was also sighted there by the Western Region between 1956 and 1957, and two more coaches were sighted there in 1958 until 1962. These were very popular forms of holiday back in those days and many many people enjoyed a tranquil holiday at Garra Bridge Station. It's a very brief drawing that I've compiled showing the track, the houses that exist today and where the signal box was sighted. We've just come up to the uh, Weak Bridge, one of the many bridges that uh, go over the River Avon as it uh, makes its journey from high up on Dartmoor down to the estuary at Averton Gifford where the river and the estuary combine and it becomes tidal And again, very tranquil here. What amazing train line it would have been had it been uh, retained and running today. Uh, we continue our journey along the old uh, Kingsbridge to Brent train line and we're here at Garra Bridge. And it's quite difficult to imagine back in the 50s, how this, in particularly in the summer, was quite a bustling station because they had the camping cars here, the camping coaches, uh, where people came on holiday. And uh, quite difficult to imagine that now. And just here would have been the uh, where the line went across the uh, across the road. As we leave Garra Bridge now, the photos here show it in its heyday. The signal box is certainly exceptionally good condition, and the crossing gates as well. Sadly, this was all to end in 1963. But bear in mind, Garra Bridge was an idyllic little uh, place. Rarely did you see a road vehicle in sight, and the railway followed the course of the River Avon from Avonwick down to Loddeswell. Garra Bridge 
as a point of interest, also had a telephone exchange, which can be seen close to the station itself. The exchange had less than 1,000 subscribers at the time because Garabridge telephone numbers only had three digits. Well, we'll take a short flight now down to Loddeswell Station and have a good look around Loddeswell Station and fill you in with some of the details. As we arrive at uh, Loddeswell Station, this is another stone-built station that was designed by the Victorian railway architect William Clark. The station also hosted the camping coaches from 1934 to 39, and the camping coaches were also here from 1952 to 57, and then two coaches from 1958 to 1961. The station also opened in 1893, but the station was uh, downgraded to an unstaffed halt when it closed to freight on the 6th of February 1961. And despite fierce local opposition, it was closed completely on the 16th of September 1963, and now is a private dwelling. Originally, the uh, station was bought in 1971 by John and Sheila Hall. Now, vandals had stripped out the lead from some of the lead valleys, but strangely, some local people had replaced the uh, lead flashings with aluminium, which uh, prevented a considerable amount of damage to the building. Sheila and John Hall embarked on a massive restoration project, and it was a beautiful station when they'd finished, and remains so to this day. Richard and uh, Nicky Curson uh, both formerly uh, serving the RF uh, purchased uh, Loddeswell Station back in 2013 to make it their uh, their main home. They converted and upgraded and restored the replica signal box in the grounds and this is now holiday accommodation and if you look in my film description you'll find the link to their website. It's well worth a look. As we follow the lane down to this uh, bridge the wood lead to Back to the main road, the B3196, we come across this bridge which takes the track from Loddeswell Station up to the bridge that goes over the 3196 on this embankment as it approaches Sawley Tunnel. The adventures up to Sawley Tunnel and the train track, the line and everything will form part of my next film. I really hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the stations from Avonwick down to Loddeswell and I truly hope you will subscribe, give it a like and all the rest of it. Thank you very much. Take the greatest of care. Cheers for now.